Sur, søl, sukker, tell, så skal båne sove og lenn. This was a uh, lullaby, a good night song, and you, of course you can travel all around the world and, and listen to the these kind of songs, and it's more or less the same musical language. And it's, I guess it's, to sing for the children is the oldest music in the world. I'm uh, working in this beautiful house. I'm working for the museum. I, ha I have this traditional music archive, uh, but the main work is really to visit schools and kindergartens and I'm teaching the old traditional songs from this area and I'm play also playing this local traditional music. So I'm trying to make people get to know it. Yeah, I know I also make simple instruments together with the children and having a lot of fun really. So simple. Just <laughs> just take a piece of a, a branch and put it in like that. It's very easy. <laughs> it costs nothing. Nanglek has been traditionally a uh, women's instrument and it's a, a quite silent instrument so it's used for the small rooms. It's a drone instrument but you have only one melody string that makes the melody. The other strings they sound to it and make a kind of a meditative music I think. traditional way I learned it was to visit an old lady next door from when I was about eight or nine years old when I went to her and learned the music just by looking and listening. I can still remember the smell of the room when I was learning it. This is a copy of the oldest uh, instrument, long leg instrument, found in Europe. It is dated uh, 1524 and uh, it has been made out of one piece of wood, carved out. And the original w was uh, still in use when I found it uh, in the middle of the 80s. That was a tune that uh, Peter Hasvold set it, which was the name of the owner of the Long Lake. He was so often playing that one. Mm. Mm. And here's pictures uh, from uh, the courses that where people make their own instruments. The start of this Jörvik Spellmannslag was in 1977 where there was a group of uh, classical violinists that wanted to play some uh, folk music. Then they searched for music and instruments and they found a lot of, of old instruments in this area. Traditionally, Valdres is uh, the main region for um, long -like music, but uh, there were at least two families here in this area as well, where there was a living tradition. And then I was old fluke. Many people know how to write down music and how to read it, but I haven't. I've been too lazy to learn it. It goes faster when I try to listen and follow it. I like to put it on the other side. 
To my students, I say oh, you have to get in it in your mind before you can get it out to your fingers, because when it's in your mind, you can make it to your own, and then you make, in my ears, a better music, because you give something to your audience or to other ones. I'm playing so many different instruments, I'm not a virtuoso on any of them, but I, I can play sufficiently for myself to think, oh, this, is, this was a nice <laughs> tune, this sounds okay, even if I haven't studied this for a million years. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. When I'm uh, visiting students from uh, the university and so on, maybe people who have been studying violin since they were th that tall, you know, and, and they have been taught how to do this properly, and then I could take a lyre and throw it to them. And, what do you do with this instrument? And they have to find out by themselves. And, and to to do that for a musician that has been taught right and wrong all the way, that's a privilege really to have that kind of instrument and making them think by themselves. The, the Nordic Heart Meeting. Uh, we had it in uh, 2010 and 2014, and now it's our turn again. So it all started in uh, Lund in Sweden, and then there's been on different locations every year since uh, in the Nordic countries. The main um, thing about the, the reason, it was to, uh, to gather people that were playing all these instruments that has been named harp through the history. And that includes langlek, it includes lyres, and kantele, and langspil, and hummel, and all sorts of uh, related instruments. So, uh, and this is for those who like to play this instrument, or make them, or simply just love them and are curious what are this all about. So on these meetings we have uh, workshops uh, at different levels and we have uh, lectures and we have small concerts and we have all, all spell that's um, tunes that everybody know so we can play together uh, with all these different instruments together. That's great fun. And um, a very good thing about it is um, uh, that we can exchange tunes from one instrument to another. And you know, um, the harp meeting, that sounds very narrow because it sounds like all, all this only for the harpists. But we have no um, sources of harp playing in the Nordic countries, even if we have some old harps in Norway, we don't have any special tunes. But on the Long Lake, we have the oldest string music in the Nordic countries. So, uh, and in Finland you have the Kantele, and the, we have the Joika, and we have 
music for these ancient instruments. And then the harp players, they can finally, they can play something authentic from, from this region. Uh, so you can play on a harp, you can play a long lake tune. That it might have been played on a harp 500 years ago, we don't know. So it's, uh, it's nice to, to mix these, uh, these traditions. My mission was to give to the next generation what I have been given through the folk music. I think of it as a gift and it's a very valuable because the music is not nice because it's old, it's because it has its own value and it's very important for me to, to give it further to young people or other people that likes it the way I do.